In this video, we'll be completing a fairly complex stoichiometry problem uh, involving gases. Let's examine this reaction first. Magnesium plus hydrochloric acid will react to make magnesium chloride. This will be a salt and it will be dissolved. You won't see it. And it will make hydrogen gas. This hydrogen gas would bubble out the top of the test tube. Now, before doing any stoichi uh, stoichiometry problem, we of course need to balance the equation. So 1, 2, 1, 1 will be the coefficients. If 2.15 grams of magnesium react completely, that's this stuff, what volume of hydrogen can be produced? That's this stuff. If the pressure is 735 torr and the temperature is 25 degrees C. So we're reacting 2.15 grams of magnesium, and we want to know what volume of hydrogen gas can we make. Now let's read this problem carefully, because one area where students get tripped up is they're not sure what these numbers really represent. So if 2.5 grams of magnesium react completely, what volume of hydrogen can be produced if the pressure is 735 torr and the temperature is 25 degrees C. So this is the pressure and the temperature, but it's the pressure and temperature of what? Well, it can't be that the pressure and temperature of magnesium. Um, magnesium is a solid, as you can see, so that doesn't even exert a pressure. So this is the pressure of hydrogen and the temperature of hydrogen, and they're asking for the volume of hydrogen. Now, we have a couple tools available to us. Um, there'll be these two tools for every um, complex stoichiometry problem like this. We'll do stoichiometry, just like always, and we'll use the ideal gas law, just like always. The complicated part um, is going through all the steps and not making any mistakes and keeping track of, of what is what. So let's use the ideal gas law. Now we know anytime we're dealing with R um, that the units are liter atmosphere per mole K. That means that any units we plug in have to be liter, atmospheres, mole, and K. So 735 torr and 25 degrees C will need to be converted to atmospheres and Kelvin. So here's the conversion between torr and atmospheres. By now, you should be familiar with this conversion. And you should also be conversion, um, familiar with converting Celsius to Kelvin. So once again, we're looking for the volume of hydrogen gas. This is the pressure of the hydrogen gas. And this is the temperature of the hydrogen gas. So let's just plug in what we know here. And of course, everything we plug in is about the hydrogen gas. We're not doing anything with this magnesium yet. That's the pressure of the hydrogen gas. They're asking for the volume of the hydrogen gas. R, that will be given to you. Um, and this is the temperature of the hydrogen gas. So in order to solve for V, you can see that we need to know how many moles of hydrogen gas there are. Well, that's where the stoichiometry step comes in. So this is stoichiometry just like usual. Start off by writing your given, 2.15 grams of magnesium. Now these coefficients here, they don't represent grams, they represent moles. So we'll have to convert grams into moles and we'll do that, of course, using the molar mass. Now we're ready for the conversion factor. The conversion factor will be between the given, which is magnesium, and the goal, which is hydrogen. And the coefficients are 1 and 1. So the conversion factor is 1 and 1. So when we carry out the math, if 2.15 grams of magnesium react, that will make this many moles of hydrogen. Now that we know how many moles of hydrogen will be made, we can plug it in for N. So now we know everything, pressure, moles, R, and temperature. Now we simply have to solve for V. So volume would be 2.24 liters of hydrogen gas. So when you do these more complex stoichiometry problems, um, you're going to do a stoichiometry step and an ideal gas law step. It doesn't necessarily um, matter which one you do first. In fact, you'll kind of do them um, at the same time. 
So these might take a little bit of practice. But this is how you do a stoichiometry problem that's not at STP.